In this video, we will be discussing six tips necessary for financial improvement and ultimately in your journey to financial wellness. It is my belief that only by implementing these strategies strictly and creating a structured routine around your finances that you will be able to realize the much needed changes you desire both immediately and in the long term. The first tip I believe is beneficial is changing your bank account. This is crucial because for a lot of people we find that we have had a single bank account for decades and have not considered changing this. Whilst it can be comforting to stick with something we know, the issue is that there are a number of banks out there that are seeking to pay you to bank with them. You don't necessarily have to change your bank, you can just open one for the purpose of switching. These bank accounts would pay between 100 and 175 pounds sometimes, even more to switch your service to them as a welcome incentive. The beauty of this is that, unlike in the past where you had to manage the switching process of your bills and payments manually, they would handle all of this for you. I suppose the question you need to ask yourself is what have you got to lose? If anything, you get to gain money that you never had in your account, which could either be used to go towards paying off setting bills or debts that you already have incurred over time. I would suggest that you check out some of the offers that are currently available using one of the comparison websites, which you can trigger using Google by typing what are the best incentives to switch bank accounts. Literally type that into Google and it'll come up with the best offers that are out there, either through Go Compare or through Money Supermarket, whichever one it is, you get to pick from one. The second tip I believe is beneficial is reducing your utility bills. The price of energy is skyrocketing and it is no surprise that there are a lot of people out there struggling to keep their homes warm. And one of the major challenges everyone faces currently, unlike they have had in the past, where they've had the opportunity to, to jump from one supplier to the next, the increased price of buying this energy wholesale for suppliers has meant that the suppliers are refusing to offer fixed price which means that you're having to pay a lot higher than you've had to in the past but it is inevitable that prices are likely to change and suppliers are likely to go back to offering fixed deals again so it is important that you continue to keep your eyes peeled for when they do come back by checking comparison websites from time to time. In the meantime, some of the strategies that you can use to reduce your bills could be having showers instead of baths where possible. Rather than having maybe five baths a week, you can reduce that to maybe having two baths a week. That is more cost effective than having baths every single day. It would also be helpful to switch off appliances that are not being used such as TVs, radios, lights, if you're not in the room and computers, don't just leave them on standby, actually switch them off. Put your radiators on timer and turn the heating off if you're not in the house. Close your curtains as soon as it starts getting darker to insulate your home. And also, it's useful to use drought excluders around major entry points within your home. The third tip I believe is beneficial is the use of cashback websites. Using one of these sites allows you to make money from spending money on your regular expenditures, such as food, clothes shopping, going on holidays, train fares, and even takeaways. 
one of the highly recognized websites that I use is Top Cashback. One thing that I have found is that sometimes it's better to use it on Chrome's rather than on Safari because on Safari it doesn't always register when you've used it. That's just been my experience. So please double check that when you're using it. Another area to check for useful cashbacks are on credit and debit cards. Some of them offer very good returns on shopping with certain retailers as well. So you can check with your credit card suppliers for this. The fourth tip is if you currently have a credit card balance, it is advisable that you transfer this to a 0% credit card as this allows you to focus on paying off the balance instead of being overwhelmed by the interest that you're having to pay off. Some of these offers can range from between 6 to 31 months. But to ensure that this does not impact on your credit score, before application, you can use the eligibility checker to see if it is possible to be accepted before taking the plunge because it is better to know. Something to consider when applying for these cards is you can apply for a number of them if you've got a number of balance that you wish to transfer. And if you're not able to get the total amount that you need, what you can then do is focusing on the amount that is left on the other card with the high interest whilst you pay off the minimum payments on the ones that you've just transferred. That way you're able to clear your debts a lot quicker. One thing you must know is that whilst you're paying off your not percent credit card, it is advisable not to use those credit cards because what happens then is you're incurring further charges on those cards. If you do use them for whatever reason, please pay the balance off in full at the end of the month. The fifth tip is the cancellation of all unwanted outgoings. In my experience, this is one of the most expensive and underrated advice. There are times when you would sign up for free trials for a period without remembering to cancel them. This could be for things such as Amazon Prime, magazines, your local yearly attractions that you've just put to one side and forgotten about it. There have been instances of people paying for gym membership for years without attending. These are funds that could be diverted into other areas, such as your bills or debts that you've already incurred over time. One of the ways to reduce the risk of falling into this habit of paying for things you do not need is by checking your bank statement from time to time. But it is important that you do more than just check your bank statement. You actually have to proceed into cancelling these items when you identify them because it is easy to fall into habits of saying, I'll do it later. Before you know it, it's another six months gone. The sixth tip is to spend less on food. One of the ways of doing this is by making sure that before you leave the house, you write a list of what you want and only purchase the items within that list. It is vital that you stick to this list and not be tempted by all of the other offers that you're going to encounter whilst you are at the shop. Basically, if it is not in the list, it does not go in the basket. And it is only by creating this habit that you're able to stick to it. It is beneficial to avoid buying expensive ready meals. I know some people would say, but I do not have time because I'm always working and I've got commitments that stops me from doing this. That's fine. That's not a problem. What you can then do is have a set day in the week or weekend where you can develop a habit of cooking in bulk and freezing it. You can cook a number of meals from scratch 
This way you can just pick up what you want on a daily basis. The good thing about cooking from scratch is that it is not only healthier for both your body, but it is also healthier for your mind. You know exactly what's in the meal and there are no added preservative. The final point I believe is important is that before we begin to tackle the journey of saving, especially in the current climate where every penny is stretched to the limit due to the current state of affairs with inflation, it is my view that by cutting back on any unwanted spending would go a long way to improving your bank balance, building up the savings pot you have always wanted to start and providing financial flexibility and freedom that you've always wanted. But before we're able to achieve the ultimate goal of financial freedom, it is essential that we begin by cutting and paying off high interest and expensive debts. Some of the areas to consider are payday loans, credit cards and store cards. The journey that we're about to embark on takes one step at a time. Think about it that way. People have done it and you can too. Thank you for listening today. We've got all the content on our channel that we'll be putting out every single week. Please like, subscribe if you like what we're all about. Until next time, you stay safe and we'll speak soon.